So I've just found this uh, footpath that goes up behind Pennon. I'm really hoping that it's going to give me a nice bird's eye view of the village and some potential new and exciting photography compositions. Wow, look at it up here. Before I um, came out tonight I had a look online at photographs that other photographers had taken of Pennon and recently I've seen that a lot of the big names on YouTube don't like to go out and you know, they don't like to research locations before they go because they don't want other photographers to influence the images that they take. But I personally find that through looking at other photographers' work and other images online of a location you're going to, I personally find that it makes me excited to get there and gives me, not necessarily ideas, but I didn't know that there was a path up here and I wouldn't have known if it wasn't for me researching this location and other photographers' photographs before coming here. So in my opinion, it's really worthwhile to do your research, to look at what other people are photographing, and it might just give you the incentive and the drive and the inspiration that you need to get out with your camera and come to places like this. Because if I'm honest, tonight I was so close to not coming out, I felt really tired and you know what it's like when you sit down, you start to lose energy, lose motivation. But it was through looking online for, for images of Pennon that other photographers had taken that I felt inspired to come here and I thought, no, you're coming out here, it's the last nice evening for the next week. You've got to make the most of it. And that is all thanks to looking at other people's work and getting inspiration for this beautiful, beautiful coastal village. <laughs> Great. This public footpath goes into a field of cows. I really, really want to get to this bird's eye view of this of the beautiful village, but I know how unpredictable cows can be at times. And quite a few of them are staring at me right now. I'm just not sure what the best course of action is. I'll maybe um, walk a little bit and see. See if they follow me. But hopefully they won't. I work with cows a lot in my job. Or at least I work in fields with cows, but <laughs> I always find going into fields of cows that you're not familiar with is um, quite daunting. They seem to be staying where they are, so I've just got to hope and pray that they don't want to follow me. But it does seem to be like a proper footpath in this field, because the public footpath goes where the cows are, towards a village called New Abadour. But I want my bird's eye view of Pennon. Right, they're staying put. Let's continue. Mission bird's eye view of Pennon is still on. Hello emotions, hello again Is every ocean come as rain? I know my son Well, this is a pretty epic view and a view of Pennon which I have never experienced before. I'm going to take a walk to the edge of this kind of cliff top area to see if we can get any other interesting compositions. But I imagine once the sun sets, it'd be really nice to get a long exposure image here with the village and the sea. I think the tide is starting to come in. We've still got about, how, what time is it? We've still got an hour and 15 minutes until the sun actually sets officially. So um, we're coming up to golden hour now, so I'm kind of hoping that we're going to get some nice light and I'm hoping that when the sun does go down that we're going to get some nice post-glow sunset light as well. Which hopefully by that point the tide will be in a bit further and it will make for a really stunning long exposure image, but time will tell. What a stunning location though, eh? This is just beautiful. I've got the gorgeous rolling hills and this lovely Pennon village. I can hear the gannets at Troop Head squawking in the distance. 
And my goodness, it is boiling. I'm so used to it becoming quite cold and chilly from about six o'clock onwards here in Scotland, but it's now quarter to nine and it's still 19 degrees. I have no idea why I'm wearing a long sleeve top and jeans, because man, I am sweating buckets right now. I'm just stopping for a few minutes to, to get rehydrated but I think I'm going to sit it out here until the sun actually sets. Although we've got the beautiful pen in here, there's a scene over here that I'm really liking the look of. We've got the nice church on top of the hill with some cows in the field and a house at the bottom. It's something different and I kind of hope that in golden hour that the field is going to be lit up because right now the sun is casting on that field, giving it some nice shadows and it's just something different. Obviously everyone comes here to photograph the village of Pennon, but you've got to look around you and see what other opportunities are out there. And I'm really liking the look of that right now. And hopefully, hopefully the light happens for me tonight. Because very rarely does the light happen for me, but I'm feeling hopeful tonight. And that doesn't happen very often. Hello my heart beats, hello again Between the worries we had for land I will be fighting to hold the line There's some really nice clouds starting to form not where the sun's setting but at the opposite side which is really exciting because that means that potentially we might have some really really beautifully lit up orange, yellow, red clouds to give our images some excitement This is getting exciting This is what you want, you want a nice sun setting with some nice bits of clouds to give the photographs that interest Oh, this honestly, like, I have not done this for so long. I forgot how great it is to get out in an evening and spend the whole evening out. Whether you're on your own or whether you're somebody close to you, just spend the whole evening out and just watch the elements and nature unfold before your eyes. Watch the weather change, watch the clouds change shape, watch the sun setting, watch the light on the land change. Where I'm planning on photographing that church if we get that golden glow, we've got some really nice shadows appearing in the fields now. You probably can't see it on here but there's some really nice shadows giving it some really nice shapes. I'm just... I'm getting excited. I'm getting really excited. I've not felt like this for so long when it comes to landscape photography. As most of you will have seen, a lot of my recent videos I have not been lucky at all. And partly that is because I'm very limited with when I can get out with my camera, which means that, you know, often the nights that I do come out aren't always the best. I'm so glad that I pushed myself to come out tonight and I got that inspiration from other photographers' work to come here because it's just stunning. It is so, so beautiful. And look, you know what I'm going to say, don't you? I've got the place to myself. I never had pen to myself, but I've got this beautiful hilltop above the village, all to myself. I'm just trying to tune into this landscape, watch the clouds form, watch the clouds roll in, watch the light change, both shape and colour, and watch it cast over the land in front of me and embrace this beautiful summer's evening in the northeast of Scotland. What could be better than this? Oh, this is so exciting. So while I'm kind of framing this shot that I've got in my head right now, a car has just driven down the road and I've just got another image idea in my head. It's probably not going to happen tonight because I'm working tomorrow so I need to get back home and have an early-ish night. But imagine it, twilight, getting dark, car coming down the road, car trails, coming down the road between the church. That is definitely something I want to do this autumn and winter is some car trail images and some iconic locations in Scotland or just some iconic roads. And that has just filled me with such a good idea and so much excitement. This is why you just got to get out because you never know what you're going to see and you never know what will inspire you. And that's you know, such a random thing, a car driving down a road and suddenly I'm like, ah, the photo idea for, for later in the year or for whenever I'm here at twilight. Oh, exciting, it's so, 
that's how your creative mind works. You just see snapshots of things as you're out and about that inspire you and get your creative mind buzzing. Oh, it's just, I've got to tell you why I'm so happy tonight. In my Q&A recently, I mentioned that I was wanting to go to an island this month and it, or, you know, in August and it probably wasn't going to happen. And the day after making that Q&A video, I found out that I might be going to Lewis and Harris. And now it's definitely happening. So at the end of August, I'm going to the Isle of Lewis and Harris for five nights. And I'm just, I've been doing loads of research today, even though I've been there twice and getting my creative mind working. And it's really inspired me to get out tonight as well as these other photographers' images. And I'm just, my creative mind is buzzing and I've not felt this creativity and this drive for landscape photography for so long. Oh, I have missed this. I have really, really missed this. That really annoying thing is starting to happen where like we get quite a lot of haze on the horizon so I'm not sure if that's gonna you know affect our chances of getting really nice golden light but for some reason tonight I am feeling lucky and I'm just wanting to chill here and see what happens there is some really nice cloud even more so than there was a few minutes ago coming quite a lot of it actually and I'm just hoping that even if the haze does ruin the, the really golden glow, I'm just hoping that these clouds are going to light up in some way and create something beautiful. There's nothing like lying in a field overlooking a coastal community with nothing but a few cameras and a few tripods to keep you company. I always think that if you can appreciate moments like this and get out and enjoy them, then you're a winner in life. Because there's so many people that never take the time to do things like this. And they miss out on so much. This is just... Phenomenal. I've not said that for ages. <laughs> Remember when I started YouTube, I used to say that in every single video. Anyway, let's just sit here and enjoy this view. And regardless of whether the light happens or not, this was a stunning evening. And as always, getting outdoors and, and experiencing this was well, well worth it. So the light doesn't seem to be happening where I wanted it to, but look at this over here. I mean, it's not that great, but it's casting this great kind of shimmeriness over the sea. So what I'm doing is I'm walking further back to where I originally came from to try and get a better viewpoint of the village with that, that sun setting and shimmering on the water. It's times like this where I really wish that I had a full frame camera. Even though 99% of the time it does not bother me. But in situations like this, it's really difficult to fit everything into a crop sensor. And so either I would love to have a full frame camera or I would love to have a wide angle lens right now. So I just can't fit in everything that I want to fit in into this image. And I know that I could do a panorama and all those other kind of things. But unfortunately I have not got an L bracket. And many people always mention to me, say, Kim, you should get an L bracket, but, you know, the ones I've seen are over £100. And for those of you who watch my Q&A, you will know that right now I do a voluntary job, so buying an £100 L bracket unfortunately won't happen. But, you know, if anybody watching this has a spare L bracket or knows somebody that wouldn't mind sending me one, I would be so, so grateful. But that's just me being optimistic 
I'd love to do panoramic images. I've always wanted to do it. But anyway, let's stop talking because the sun is setting quite well now. Like I say, that lovely golden light that I wanted isn't going to happen by the looks of things, but there's still hope for some more interesting images. And the clouds are getting even more interesting. Every time I look up, they're more and more interesting. So we might still get some beautiful post-sunset colours and light in the sky. And we're just going to see what unfolds in the next few minutes. So it's now half an hour until the sun officially sets. It's starting to go behind the the kind of har haze on the horizon now. But there's still that opportunity and possibility of the clouds above the sunset lighting up those beautiful colours once it's gone behind the clouds. I don't know whether I want to stick it out up here and wait for that because then that requires me walking back through that cow's field and back down to the village in the potential dark-ish light or whether I want to go back down to the village and hope that I can get some nice kind of images of of reflections and that around the harbour. You know sometimes choosing to move is, is a bad idea. I think I might just sit out here for another 10 minutes and see how I feel. I've taken quite a few images tonight. They're not by any standard award winning, but this is the first time I've really been out and doing photography properly in this situation for, for quite some time now. And just getting my camera out again and taking those images and and kind of tuning myself back into the the idea of, of seascape images and staying out late in the summer. It's, tonight, I've just found it so beneficial and like I say, it's really got my creative juices flowing again. So regardless of whether we get any nice images in the next half an hour, it doesn't really matter where I am, what I'm doing. I'm content with how tonight's gone and I'm glad I've got some images to show you. And I filmed so much tonight that this is probably going to be a two-parter, which is excellent because you're going to have had a video on Thursday and Sunday this week. I've got to do this more often, don't I? Is there anywhere in Aberdeenshire that you guys would really like me to go? I've got quite a lot of, of ideas in my head already, most of which are going to be winter shoots. Places like Donotter Castle and there's a couple of other places around there that I want to kind of do in the winter months. I've got quite a few ideas for Aberdeen, the city itself, which again are going to be more winter month orientated because I found last winter I kind of lost my way a bit and I find Sometimes getting out in the winter, sometimes, although the, the sun sets and rises at better times, I sometimes find it more difficult to get out in the winter because, because you know, the weather is cold and it's stormy. and So I'm really trying to find ideas of things that I can do this autumn and winter to really get my photography game back up at those, you know, good, good times of year. While in the summer I can get out here and scout at locations and just enjoy it. Oh, this is just stunning. Just look at the sunset light casting and glistening on the sea in front of me. a great way to spend a Friday evening. So I may not have got that golden light that I'd hoped for but I think I'm pretty happy with some of the images I got tonight. Like I said earlier, or I think I said earlier, they're not award winning by any means but it's so good to get out with the camera again, so good to be snapping away at those images and doing these evening shoots that I used to do so much years ago when I had so much more time on my hands. Just finding tonight to do this 
And it's just so good to get back to that place that you used to be in and do something that you used to love but you just never find the time to do nowadays. I suppose the lesson that I want to kind of, or the, the advice that I want to give at the end of this video is no matter how busy your life is and no matter how much you struggle to get outdoors obviously in life when when things are busy you need to rest you need a break but if you've got energy one evening get yourself out even if you're not out with your camera if you're out for a walk out in nature just even for half an hour it is it's just so good so good and if you are into photography and you do get out with your camera it can be so well worth it and I'm just so grateful tonight because I left the house at 7 it's now almost it's now quarter to 10 so I've been out for 3 hours pretty much but it's just been it's been so worth it oh, I'm coming over now to see my cow friends just got to hope that they're not over the gate um, see if we can get back down to this village of Pennon get back down to the car and just feel really happy and really you know just just I just just to feel so privileged to have been here tonight and to to have enjoyed this especially when I was so close to not coming tonight it just shows sometimes you just got to find something in life that gives you that inspiration that pushes you and motivates you to get out and do the things you love because while we all have to work, we all have to make a living, we all have to do things we don't want to do in life. It's important sometimes to get out and do things that you do enjoy. And getting out into nature is one of the best ways to embrace that and to enjoy that. And so many people I feel get put off about the idea of going out into nature, especially if they don't have anyone to go out with and you know tonight I messaged a few people to see if they wanted to come out with me but nobody was free or everybody was too tired and as that also kind of made me think will I go out tonight? But I thought you know what no I'm going to and I'm just I'm so glad I did because while sometimes going out on your own can be a bit lonely it really helps your mind and if you can enjoy your own company and enjoy nature by yourself I think it puts you in a very good place there's nobody here to distract me I can completely focus on my vlogging and my photography and whatever's going on in my head and I can completely focus on me just for a few hours just focus on me do exactly what I want to do and that's why I would encourage you all if you live somewhere safe or somewhere that you feel comfortable going out on your own do it don't let you know, being there on your own or loneliness stop you. Because it's through getting out on your own and through experiencing the world through your own eyes without interference or without influence of others that you grow as a person and that you learn more about yourself and about the world around you, what you like, what you dislike and what you, you really appreciate and want out of your life. I'm getting really philosophical again. <laughs> but I, I've always found that that when I'm out with my camera and when I'm out in nature by myself that it really allows me to to get quite philosophical and quite mature and and and, and just it's just I don't know I, I think a lot about about things about life about the purpose of life about all these kind of things when I'm out with my camera and when I'm out in nature and it's so therapeutic anyway let's head back to the car I just want to say as always, thank you all again for watching. I hope you've got something positive out of these videos. And I just hope that you've enjoyed this evening. And it encourages you to get out in the evenings and enjoy this. It encourages you to come to beautiful places like this. And encourages you to get some landscape shots. Or just get out for a walk. I'll hopefully see you all again next time. In you.